Hi friends, welcome to Eretic Solutions. So I just discussed about the block diagram and their features of microcontroller. So whenever you are trying to use the features of microcontroller, so you should be aware of the pin diagram of microcontroller. See, whenever you are proceeding to use the hardware for applications, so it should be very clear on your pin diagram. Like if you are trying to connect a sensor with microcontroller. So you need to know where I can connect your sensor across pin number 1 or pin number 2 or pin number 10 or pin number 20. So this is very important for us. Whether the pin, particular pin is related to what purpose. Okay. See, whatever the features you are saying from block diagram. So all the features you can, you can observe in the form of pins here. Okay. But before proceeding pin diagram, so I want to... So let's give the simple information behind this ICs, ICs design and what are the technologies and what are the packages of ICs. So mostly every microcontroller is available in the form of IC. IC full form is integrated circuits. So these ICs which are designed by VLSI people like which is comes under physical design of integrated circuits. So but whereas design follows two different technologies in ICs which is TTL and CMOS. So TTL stands for transistor transistor logic and CMOS stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So this TTL which is used for BZTs to design the ICs. So as of you know that from academic every integrated circuit is designed with some thousands of transistors. So these thousands of transistors either BZTs or FETs which are present in the ICs. And so this TTL which is going to use BZTs and BZT full form is again bijunction, sorry bipolar junction transistor. So I think you are aware of the symbol of transistor. So this transistor will contain three pins base, collector and emitter. So these three are the three individual pins of a simple transistor. Either it is PNP or NPN it's a different matter but so your BZT which means bipolar junction transistor and in TTL technology finally we are going to use a normal transistors for IC design. Whereas the second category which is CMOS complementary metal oxide semiconductor this technology uses FETS. FETS full form is field effect transistor and field effect transistor three pins are gate drain source. So these three are the three individual pins of FET. I think from academic you may get differences between BZT and FET. So whenever you are going to compare these two transistors, so FET is far better than your regular BZT because your FETs are having very low conduction voltage and conduction current. So these are all the uh, good factors about your FET compared to your regular BZTs. So, so that is the reason the present running technology for IC design is CMOS, not TTL. And how to notice whether is IC is designed with uh, TTL technology or CMOS technology. As a power supply pins, you may get the simple blind marks as VCC and ground for TTL technology and VDD and VSS for CMOS technology. So these two is the simple power supply pins you can notice from pin diagram so that you can easily identify the IC is designed with which technology, either TTL or CMOS. Mostly in BZT or TTL technology, having the power supply pins from IC, which is VCC and ground, and from CMOS technology, the IC have power supply pins as VDD and VSS. So this is a simple thing, like no need to go for more in depth about this IC design, Those that, that will come to purely on VLSA technology. But the outcome of VLSA technology as IC, we are using as a embedded developers. Now, so coming to these packages. So generally your ICs are available in different shapes like package means shape of the IC here and DIP which stands for dual inline package. So mostly as a student level or as an academic level you will find ICs in this package dual inline package. In this package you will get two side spins for your IC. Whereas the other package is SOP which is small outline package. So this package having pins only one side. Don't think that IC always come up with the two sides pins. No. So in some cases you may find only one side pins for your device. The third package is QFP which is quad flat package. So this is used by the industries or uh, the production level. You may find only this 
QFP package in most of the cases. So in QFP package, you'll get four side pins for your device. So like, but the pin to pin gap is also very low uh, uh, compared to the other two packages. QFP package have very small gap between pin to pin and it is a very small and easy to fit in the board like which will make us even the board size either bigger or smaller so only in student level you may find these two packages but once you coming to industry or uh, production level or development you may find this QFP package or BGA again BGA is the BGA full form is ball grid array so this package having the pins only bottom of the device so like a processor in our motherboard so in our motherboard you will find a processor and in processor only bottom side you have the pins no sides and no like uh, any any side you don't have any pins for in this package so that finally don't think that ic means only it will come up with only two sides so there are even the other packages you should understand but once you moving on to 32 bit or 64 bit category devices the package is also different for your ics and package will affect the cost of the application also okay so again dip package controllers have low cost and qfp packages have some higher cost than dip package and bga package also co higher cost than qfp okay so like this depends on the cost of the application they will choose different packages okay so this this is the information behind this ic technology and ic packages now whereas your basic 8051 microcontroller is available in the 40 pin dip package so dip means which is two side spins for your ICS and this 8051 from any family or any manufacturer you may get only this 40 pins so these 40 pins you need to understand from this but the features which are different from one manufacturer to other manufacturer but you have to follow the standard features see without the six standard features from any manufacturer your license is your your standards will not match okay every manufacturer has to follow the six standard features by following those six standard features they can add up more features in the device okay but here in this out of 40 pins it is very easy to remember and these 40 pins are uh, have their own dedicated functionalities one side you'll get the pins 1 to 20 and other side 21 to 40 okay so we'll discuss one by one so like coming to this pins 1 to 8 so these are dedicatedly used for port 1 you don't have any alternate functionality here see in many microcontrollers you may find more functionalities for one pin but how to decide whether the pin is doing single functionality or alternate functionality or third alternate functionality so that that for that is decided by the registers in programming okay you have your own registers to decide the functionality of the pins from the next level controllers or next level devices okay so here 1 to 8 dedicated for only port 1 and again port means here your all io ports from microcontroller are used for connecting external peripherals like sensors displays motors whatever you want you can connect across this ios and input output lines have their standard logics like if you make it 1 in the program it will give 5 volts and if you make it 0 in the program it will give 0 volts to the external connected device so this is bi-directional input output port from 1 to 8 and here p1.0 is lsb of your port 1 and p1.7 is msb of your port 1 so lsb full form is least significant bit and msb full form is most significant bit and the ninth pin is reset and every programmable device will get reset pin so this reset pin is compulsory for every programmable device even including processors any programmable device you take you will find one reset pin from the device generally the reset which is required whenever your device will get struck so or whenever you are trying to re-execute the program from beginning so in all cases we are going to use this reset pin so by having some external connections you will see uh, the reset what you need some external components across the reset but reset purpose from any programmable device is very clear whenever you are trying to uh, re-execute the program from beginning or else you have any struck or it is hold it somewhere so then you can you are going to attempt the logic for this reset pin simply and the pins 10 to 17 which are dedicated for port 3 
as well some alternate functionalities so here the port 3 is port 3 pins have p3.0 to p3.7 and here p3.0 is lsb and p3.7 is msb and what about the alternate functionalities of port 3 here see p3.0 used for rxd which means receive data serially so whatever the serial port we are saying from block diagram the serial port functionality which is done by these two pins from the pins from the pin diagram rxd and txt so rxd meant for receive the data and txd means transmit the data so these two pins you can use for serial communication purpose to communicate with external modules and the next two pins are interrupts so int0 and int1 so these two are dedicated for hardware interrupts from the microcontroller so whenever we are giving one external pulse across these interrupt pins the microcontroller will stop the main program execution and divert it to execute high priority task from the application which is isr so these two pins are dedicated for interrupts and p3.4 and p3.5 are dedicated for timers or counters so again whenever you are trying to use the counters feature from microcontroller you need to provide the external pulses across these two pins for counters application and next p3.6 and p3.7 are dedicated for read and write operations with external memory so, so in some manufacturers they are giving only limited amount of memory like 4k 8k as a ROM memory if your memory is not sufficient to you then you need to depends on external memory interfacing but whenever you are doing external memory interfacing these two pins will come into the picture for read and write operations with the memory so this is the importance of these alternate functionalities but again alternate functionalities are selected by SFRs from the microcontroller so you need to know about these SFRs from microcontrollers special function registers so these special function registers are helping us to decide the functionality of these pins whether you are using for IO or alternate functionality if you are trying to use IO no need of disturbing these SFR registers but whenever you are looking for this alternate functionality you need to program these SFR registers okay but by default these pins use it for IOs but whenever you are looking for alternate functionality please check it with this SFR registers logics then 18 and 19 so these two pins are dedicated for oscillator so generally whenever you are looking for program execution so I think you may heard about mission cycle so what is meant by mission cycle in microcontrollers or processors so mission cycle means the time taken to execute an instruction your device also will take some time to execute the instruction but how much time it is taking so that purely decided by mission cycle so whereas in 8051 microcontroller one mission cycle equals to 12 clock cycles so here the time period which is measured with pulse period how many clock cycles which is taking to execute one instruction and again instruction execution happens in three stages fetch from the memory and decode which means convert to zeros and ones and execute it by the CPU so these three stages to finish these three stages your microcontroller requires some time so that time which is measured in mission cycles form and here maybe for one instruction it may take two mission cycles one mission cycle three mission cycles depends on the length of instruction okay so as per your individual microcontrollers they have their individual mission cycles count so this will change from controller to controller or processor to processor that you need to understand so these clock cycles who is going to generate so that is the matter here so these clock cycles which are generated by oscillators so whatever the external oscillator we are connecting across these 18 and 19 pins from the microcontroller so that oscillator will take care of generating clock cycles with certain frequency again frequency definition is very clear number of cycles generated per second in one second how many cycles you are going to generate whether you are generating 10 cycles so that or 20 cycles or 30 cycles that will be decide the execution speed of your device suppose if I am saying 10 kilohertz of frequency which means you are generating 10,000 cycles within one second time if you are generating 10,000 cycles in one second time the device is going to execute more number of instructions 
just you need to divide with the 12 so that you will get number of instructions how many it is going to execute if the supporting frequency is more from the devices so execution speed will be high so now whereas 8051 families are supporting the frequency is 4 megahertz to 40 megahertz this is the range of oscillator supporting frequency from this family suppose you are moving to next level devices like 32 bit stm32 or raspberry pi boards they may support frequencies in gigahertz see if the frequency supporting is high then the execution speed will be more so that if you even if you want to buy a controller or a processor so most of the points as per bit capacity they will check out the supporting clock frequency also if it is in gigahertz obviously the execution time is in nanoseconds if it is in megahertz the execution time is in microseconds if the supporting frequency is in kilohertz the execution time is in milliseconds so this is how you need to differentiate the capacity or execution capacity of the controllers so whereas your basic controllers are supporting frequencies in megahertz so obviously your program execution in microseconds so that is the importance of 18 and 19 pins from the device and again 20th pin so this is the device ground pin so you need to every integrated circuit requires power supply pins so from 8051 40th pin is the vcc and 20th pin is the ground so across these two pins you need to provide power supply and 21 to 28 so these two pins are dedicated for port 2 as well some address lines higher byte address lines of microcontroller so by default these pins are dedicated for ios but again when these lines used for address lines of microcontroller address lines means a8 to a15 this is higher byte address bus so this alternate functionality is which is decided by the three control pins from the device here ea stands for external access which is pin number 31 and ale stands for address latch enable and the third control pin is program store enable so based on the logics of these three control pins you can decide the pins 21 to 28 and as well 39 to 32 so by default these pins used for ios but whenever you are dealing with these three control pins then the pin functionality is going to change whereas eea which is external access again it is an active low pin so whenever you are enabling this ea pin the pins 39 to 32 and 21 to 28 acts as address and data lines but if you want to enable this pin you need ground connection because it is active low if you give 0 it is active if you give 1 it is disabled okay the ea pin will decide the functionality of these pins if ea is connected to vcc the pins used for ios and if ea, EA pin is connected to ground these pins are used for address and data lines not ios and what about ALE. So finally, EA pin logic 0 means these pins are using for address, address lines A0 to A7 and A8 to A15 as well data lines D0 to D7. But again there is a conflict here pins 39 to 32 used for address as well as data. But when these pins are carrying address, when these pins are carrying data. So that will be decided by ALE logic. If ALE logic is 0, the pins used for address lines A0 to A7. So finally, your microcontroller is supporting 16-bit address bus and 8-bit data bus with Harvard architecture. So this A0 to A15 functionality decided by ALE here. If ALE logic is 0, these pins used for only address lines, not data lines. If ALE logic is 1, then these pins used for data lines d0 to d7 that time this is these pins are not used for address and what about psen control pin working so this psen control pin working is very clear so this psen pin which is decides whether you want to do enable read and write operations with external memory so 
if you have not sufficient memory in the device whenever you are trying to do for external access you need to deal with these three control pins otherwise simply you are disabling external access by connecting with vcc so this is the importance of 31 30 and 29 pins and pins 39 to 32 these pins dedicated for port 0 and port 0 means here there is a one uh, one thing you need to know about port 0 here from 8051 port 0 is open drain what is meant by open drain so in in integrated circuits most of the cases few pins they given as a open drain so open drain all open drain pins from any integrated circuit requires external source which means so if you are not providing any external source these pins they are in open drain so open drain means you need to understand this here whatever the logic you are giving from program if you want to push that logic one 5 volts output and logic 0 0 volts internally what happens if i am making logic one in the program which is sourcing the voltage to the connected device so there are two concepts here sourcing and syncing concepts and if you are making logic one your device will source the voltage to external device and if you give logic zero it will sync the voltage to ground so but if the pin is open drain which doesn't perform your logic if you make logic one it doesn't source the voltage to connected device so that you need to give some external source and for this all open drain pins you need some pull up resistors and pull up resistor connection is very clear so add one end of the resistor with vcc and other end of resistor you need to connect with pin and from here you can do your external interfaces whatever you want but all open drain pins needs some external source through resistors again so see i'm not giving this vcc directly to the pins because it will damage my pin if I am giving directly because VCC source have more current so that generally you are going to use some resistors so these resistors are called pull up resistors and resistors if you use before the before the device or before the load between source and load which is pull up and if you use resistor after source and connected with the load and connected with the resistor which is pulled down so you will see the differences with pull up and pull down in the next session but remember this every open drain pins requires some external source and which is given through pull up resistors and here all port zero pins are open drain so you need to add some external pull up resistors if you want to use this port zero pins for applications but remaining port 0, port 1, port 2, port 3 you can use directly no need of any external pull up resistors they will give you for logic 1 5 volts and logic 0 0 volts and 40th pin is your power supply pins and your 8051 microcontroller works with 5 volts DC operating voltage and this operating voltage is also one of the important major criteria in controllers in advanced controllers the operating voltage is becoming less as 3.3 volts or 3 volts so this is reduced for next generation controllers because power consumption is the important parameter for every individual ICS so this is about the complete 40 pins it is easy to remember out of 40 32 pins are IOS and remaining 8 pins out of 8 pins 2 pins for power supply and remaining 6 pins are 2 oscillator pins and 1 reset pin and 3 external memory access pins so this is very simple to understand and easy to work and in the next session you will see interfacings with this microcontroller thanks thanks for watching